make tent to help train for the jobs that are available to them. As my poor gentleman said, I said, the one way to encourage economic growth is to offer incentives to new businesses. Make it affordable for them to do business and grow them. The more businesses that come and grow, the more tax revenue the city will generate to help to stabilize the tax base. Hopefully, with Tracker Supply coming in, other businesses will see this and take it into the city and they too will open their doors to grow them. Next question we'll start. We talked about, um, you mentioned in, in your earlier comments about the Christopher C. Florida Commerce Park. What is your position on the possibility of the city of and Annex being all or part of that park in the city? Well, what the public might not know, we have them into a covenant with them to annex all of their properties out there. On the subject of annexation, I believe uh, with an entity like that that's going to produce jobs and produce revenue and taxes, I think we should annex it in. But when it comes down to big open properties such as uh, cow pasture, gold, burnout oil growth, I, I don't think that would be a valuable resource for the cost because it's vacant and dormant land. But a complex like that, that's if we invite businesses to come into that area, then it would be a good tax revenue, and I'm agreeable with that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Adler, annexing the Commerce Park? We currently have several, par several properties in the Driscoll Seat work plan that have signed covenants and annexing to the city of Brooklyn. However, even, those, even though these are voluntary annexations, we've not been able to complete these due to uh, ongoing issues with regards to trying to get the um, Intergovernmental Service Boundary Agreement signed. That agreement will allow us to annex some of the um, properties that are not contiguous to the city, which we're not able to do right now. Um, on the other hand, um, if we have the opportunity to complete these annexations, we should pursue as many as we can as it's outlined in the, in the agreement. The annexations are not going to increase our, our um, demand on services since they're already part of our own aid district. Um, they will increase our tax base, we will increase our tax revenues for the city and possibly reduce um, property taxes to our, to our residents. So I'm in favor of doing those annexations. However, it is an often slow process since you cannot just do them all at once due to things like advertising. You have to have the ordinances, you've got to have notices sent out to the landowners. So it is a slow, laborious project. That, uh, that does take time. And once the uh, is the is signed, we should proceed as quickly as we can to do as many as possible. Mr. Gerber. Yes. Right now, I think we can only annex the properties that have signed covenants annexed in place, unless some of the others want to be annexed in. I spent a lot of time going over the property that had signed covenants annexed in place five years ago. At that time. Groveland. If Groveland annexed in all of the properties that had signed covenants annexed, it would bring in an extra $200,000 a year. We failed to do that in a timely manner, and so now we're caught short trying to catch up. This is also good for Groveland. Very little impact on services. Those are the properties that get. This is the way Groveland can get also benefit from the permit fees in the future. Work with Lake County EDC and Orlando EDC to promote this area the same way with all the property growth. If you don't get the word out, you will be left behind. With the other properties that stay in the county, there needs to be some kind of agreement between Lake County and growth to maintain the roads and infrastructure. Thank you, sir. Lake County the economy and create quality jobs. Companies such as Duncan Donuts Distribution and Niagara Water Bottling Company have opened their businesses there. Unfortunately, there are a lot of buildings that are vacant, which means, I guess, the economy just drove them out because they couldn't afford to be open. 
But I believe in annexing, annexing the industrial park would be good for growth because it will bring in extra revenue without increasing other essential services. My position on annexation is to use a smart annexation philosophy. I'd be in favor of entertaining the approval of all future annexations of developed property, including the properties lying within the Christopher C. Ford Industrial Park. Grove and Kirby Hall signed covenants to annex for several developed par parcels located in Christopher C. Ford. In regards to future annexations of undeveloped property, I would support annexation additional undeveloped property with the understanding of a predetermined defined time for development to begin. By using this method, it will prevent growth from overburdening its current tax base with additional expenditures, current tax payers to pay your dollar for municipal services to areas with little hope or long-term expectations of development. Undeveloped property with no deep from predefined development Work to eliminate Groveland's ability to derive additional tax dollars needed to the cost of municipal infrastructure the city would, obligate, would be obligated to provide. Christopher City Park, uh, Christopher City Ford actually donated the land to Lake County, and Lake County sold the developers willing to create 20 jobs on that at approximately five to ten dollars an acre. Um, unfortunately, the economy went down and a lot of the business as I suspect. I believe uh, growth and annexation annexing a lot of that property will be able to uh, re-stimulate growth in that particular area of the Many believe outsourcing is a viable option to reduce the municipal budget. What is your position on the outsourcing of municipal services? As William Kerr mentioned several times this evening, we need jobs for growth. But outsourcing municipal services is going to have an overall negative effect. For instance, we're going to lose a job, or two, or three. Businesses will then be losing jobs, or losing income because of a reduction in staff or, or otherwise. Um, less tax revenues will be coming to the city, which will maybe cause business to close. Um, outsourcing is often more expensive and costly because there's a lot of other costs that come into it versus just a salary and benefits. But on the other hand, as you look to partner with the surrounding cities and share resources that are not going to affect the safety of our residents. For instance, we're in the process of replacing one of our wells in the north end of the city, and we were able to piggyback off of another city's contract with the well company. This should result in substantial savings in the city. So overall, when we talk about um, outsourcing municipal services, and then we talk about even jobs, and to me, you know, which one is it going to be? Job, are we going to get rid of the job by a contract? Maybe that's going to be in the city. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, see, I believe that outsourcing is a great way to save money. First, you need to make sure you're going to get the same level of service as what you have now and make sure the savings is working. Nowadays, the city has to try to save as much as possible. Years ago, I was told by my grandfather watch your pennies, your dollars to take care of themselves. Also, sometimes when you outsource a job, you have an agreement for the outsource company to hire the people that are affected. Drumlin outsources the mailing of the water bills. That did not affect the cost, or not cost jobs. Again, the staff and council needs to work together to keep the cost down for the citizens of Drumlin. What? Outsourcing some services could be cost effective, but then again, it cost more in the long run, as well as reduce the quality, dependability, and stability of the services we have now. I don't like the idea of outsourcing when it comes to the police, fire, and rescue, and if at all possible, I would not agree to it in these three instances. I would not want any of our residents' lives or their properties put in jeopardy because of lack of response time. We may or may not get the response time we need, and it would be unacceptable if anything happened to one of Rover's residents because of it. I have seen some companies do outsourcing, and unfortunately it only worked out maybe 2% of the time. So I am not in agreement with outsourcing. Same question. Rover currently outsources a number of services, provide services for 
residence building and building inspection services as well as solid waste pickup and disposal. The reason behind this decision lies within the realm of what is an acceptable liability and cost of the taxpayers of Groveland. The cost of the taxpayers of Groveland to establish and operate these <coughs> services in today's economy is prohibitive. The liability associated with these services is over what I feel would be an acceptable rate for our taxpayers. Our utility billing delivery service is also outsourced. This was done for two main reasons. The first being the function was labor intensive and costly. We found that outsourcing this function, we were able to free up the utility billing personnel to provide functions that were more essential to grow the utility customers, as well as save our utility customers a substantial cost. Although outsourcing is a viable option, we have to take it consideration several factors. Capital expenditure outlay for us to do this in-house. Acceptable liability factors. Operation, annual operational costs. In addition, what I feel is the most critical and important factor, the cost provide, the cost of providing services versus the acceptable level of services provided for the taxpayer. Thank you. position on outsourcing? In today's society, when you hear the word outsourcing, even off of Washington, D.C., it always brings to mind job replacement. And my answer is only if it's absolutely necessary. And if there is a depletion of threat of the department, corporals being drained, then I agree with it. But if it's economically feasible for the city and its residents, I agree with you. But uh, only if it's downstream and it's necessary. That's my answer. Thank you. Well, this concludes the question. Can their final thoughts to you and encourage you to vote for them? We will start with Ms. Mary. Thank you. I'd just like to thank the citizens for all coming, for all the citizens for coming out tonight. Also, we have to thank the chamber for putting this on. I appreciate it. And uh, just continue to support each and every one of the the way that you feel. It's so important. Thank you. Good. Ms. Sweat? I would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and the chamber for putting on this forum. And I just want everybody to be smart and come out and vote. And just make, make sure you pick the person you think is right for the job. Well, yes, again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out in the chamber for, for sponsoring this event again this year. Again, every vote does count. Uh, this is the general election year. We have a lot of amendments and a lot of uh, decisions that are going to be on the ballot. Please look into an amendment for a very critical factor for small municipalities, actually for all municipalities. It's going to benefit uh, new homeowners, but it's also going to cost existing homeowners in the long run. By reducing the uh, amount of taxable income that the city has, you're left with several options. Go to a commercial tax base and raise taxes. I'm opposed to raising taxes. I am a proponent of sticking a raise in the commercial tax base. Be sure and vote on the number of tax base. Also, I'd like to reiterate that I love the city of Oman Reyes here. I would like to thank the citizens that supported me throughout these last 